To be worth one's salt is to be worth one's pay. Our word salary derives from the Latin salarium. There is some debate over the origin of the word, but most scholars accept that it was the money allowed to Roman soldiers for the purchase of salt. Other phrases that would have been known to a medieval mind were take with a grain of salt, the salt of the earth, and below the salt. Today, nothing could be more common than the salt and pepper at our tables. Once considered a form of payment, now the most plebeian of condiments. Whether at home or a restaurant, salt and pepper are inseparable. Their containers are alike as two eggs, two peas in a pod, indistinguishable except for some inscription or marking on their surface. Yet by coupling them this way, we also conjoin two distinct epics of world history together because both salt and pepper symbolize distinct phases in civilization. Their current availability is a testament to human ingenuity. Both salt and pepper have their own story to tell, but today, let us begin with salt. Its use dates back to dim prehistory, a primordial substance, a mineral of the earth. Salt has been considered sacred by our ancestors. The Romans offered salt to the gods. In fact, the Latin word for well-being, salus, derives from the Latin root sal, which means salt. It's no wonder then that the ancient Romans administered salt as a medicine as well as using it to flavor and preserve food, though they were not the first to discover this function. The Egyptians were, perhaps, the first to realize the preservation possibilities of salt. Sodium draws the bacteria causing moisture out of foods, drying them, and making it possible to store meat without refrigeration for extended periods of time. Delicacies like our modern-day Parma ham Gravlax, Bresola, Bacala are all the result of salt curing. But back in the day, this type of preservation wasn't limited to meat. Mummies were packed in salt too. In fact, when mummies were shipped down the Nile as cargo, they were taxed in the salted meat bracket. Salt in Chinese history drove not only technological advancement, but became a reliable and steady stream of revenue for the imperial government. Wars were being fought over control of a salt lake in the province of Shanxi as early as 6000 BC. Salt was gathered from the lake during the dry season when the water evaporated and the flats of salt were exposed. In ancient Greece, both salt and bread were symbols of life and the sanctity of hospitality, which is why they were presented to guests upon arrival. And even to this day, especially in Russia or Slavic cultures, we carry on this tradition to newlyweds when they set up housekeeping. The Bible contains numerous references to salt. The biblical expressions, the salt of life or the salt of the earth, don't carry the same weight as they once did. Yet the role of salt in the Bible is a mere reflection of Hebrew society during the era in which the Old Testament was written. Salt was used metaphorically to signify permanence, loyalty, durability, fidelity, usefulness, value, and purification. It may well seem strange to us that the youngest daughter in the fairy tale should compare her love for her father to her love for salt. The best foods do not please me without salt. Therefore, I love my father like salt. Salt is an acid that acts on a base. A lot of things are salt. Not all salts are edible. The salt we eat, sodium chloride, can be broken down into two categories, rock salt and sea salt. There is also potassium chloride, which you can eat but is used for potash, fertilizer. It's also used as a salt substitute for food. Magnesium chloride is an important coagulant used to prepare tofu from soy milk. In Japan, it's sold as nigari, 
derived from the Japanese word for bitter. Nigari is the white powder produced from seawater after sodium chloride has been removed and the water's been evaporated. Additionally, there are various grades to the refinements of salts in general. The largest use for salt in the United States is for de-icing roads, and that would be the cheapest salt. You don't even have to clean it, just crush it and use it. Pharmaceutical salt, on the other hand, has to be highly refined and pure. Over 50% of all drug molecules used in medicine exist as salts. Sodium chloride, aka salt, is essential for human life. And until the invention of canning and refrigeration was the primary method of preservation of food. Not surprisingly, it has long been considered valuable. So valuable, in fact, that wars were being financed with salt. And wars have been fought over salt. Salt was fought during the American Revolution. As a necessity of life, not only do humans need salt, but so do livestock. So if you have an army, horses do. Large supplies of it. In the Civil War, salt was a very important issue. The North produced a lot of salt. Thus, the South relied on Cheshire salt from Britain. Naval blockades were set up against the British, and the South soon became desperate for salt, not only for their army, but for people's daily lives. The French Revolution was intertwined with salt. There are many reasons for the French Revolution, but the unfair taxes and financial burden imposed upon the lower middle classes and peasants was a main facet of the general population's discontent. Salt created and destroyed empires. The salt mines of Poland led to a vast kingdom in the 16th century, only to be demolished when the Germans brought in sea salt, which most of the world considered superior to rock salt. In medieval Italy, Venice fought and won a war with Genoa over salt and other spices. During India's independence movement, Mohandas Gandhi organized the Salt Satyagraha protest to demonstrate against the British salt tax. Today, thousands of years of coveting, fighting over, hoarding, taxing, and searching for salt appear picturesque and slightly foolish. The 17th century British leaders who spoke with urgency about the dangerous national dependence on French sea salt seemed somehow more comic than contemporary leaders concerned with a dependence on foreign oil. In every age, people are certain that only the things they have deemed valuable have true value. The search for love and the search for wealth are always the two best stories. But while a love story is timeless, the story of a quest for wealth, given enough time, will always seem like the vain pursuit of a mirage.